B7.
Good morning. If you'll flip the page on your hymnal, we can do the second eight verses to that hymn. It is a favorite, though. It is great. This morning, we celebrate All Saints Sunday, and our youth are present, most especially in our liturgy this morning, and also in greeting and welcoming, so we are glad that they are all here, and we are here worshiping together. The service, is you will follow this morning, pretty much is self-contained in the bulletin, so if you'll keep that handy, that will help you out. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. appearing, visionary and apostle John of Patmos resisting the beast, Stand here beside us. martyrs in Rome itself, Justin, Cecilia, Deacon Lawrence, Stand here beside us. martyrs and confessors, Polycarp of Smyrna, Ignatius of Antioch, Justin, Sergius and Bacchus refusing to offer incense to Caesar. Stand here beside us. Confessors in Africa, Perpetua and Felicity, Moses the Black, Cyprian, Constance and their companions. 
stand here beside us. A reading from the Revelation of John. After this, I, John, looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God singing, <clears throat> Amen, blessing and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the leaders addressed me, saying, Who are these? robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. like stars appearing, Patrick and Bridget of Ireland, Columba of Iona, Aidan and Cuthbert of Scotland, Augustine of Canterbury, Hilda of Whitby, Alban, first martyr of Britain, bringers of faith to the land of the Saxons and Celts. Stand here beside us. Faithful royals, Bertha and Ethelbert, first Christian monarchs in England, Margaret of Scotland, Louis of France, and Kamehameha and Emma of Hawaii. Stand here beside us. Thomas Cranmer, Martin Luther, John Calvin, and all who sought to renew the church. Stand here beside us. Johann Sebastian Bach, George Friedrich Handel, Thomas Tallis, and all who speak the music of the soul. Stand here beside us. Witnesses in England, John and Charles Wesley, street ministers. Stand here beside us. 
missionaries to foreign lands, Cyril and Methodius, Francis Xavier, Samuel Isaac Joseph Sharashevsky. Stand here beside us. like stars appearing, servants of the first peoples of this land, Harriet Bedell, David Pendleton Okerhater, innocent of Alaska, John Emengabo. Stand here beside us. Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, Sojourner Truth and William Wilberforce, and all liberators and prophets. Stand here beside us. Children of the synagogue, Albert Einstein, Martin Buber, Edith Stein, and Anne Frank. Stand here beside us. Augustine of Hippo, Thomas Aquinas, Soren Kierkegaard, Simone Weil, Karl Barth, and all theologians and philosophers. Stand here beside us. A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, what should, that we should be called the children of God, and this is what we are. The reason the world does not know us, know us is because that is not, because that, that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we, what we will be has not yet been revealed. What we know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him 
purify themselves, just as he is pure. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. like stars appearing, bridegroom of poverty, our brother Francis of Assisi, follower of Jesus and friend of creation. Stand here beside us. Ailred of Riveau, Benedict of Nursia, Ignatius of Loyola, and all monks. Stand here beside us. Hildegard of Bingen, Teresa of Avila, Jalaladin Rumi, Julian of Norwich, John of the Cross, mystics and visionaries. Stand here beside us. Thomas Merton, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Evelyn Underhill, Henry Nowen, Brother Roger of Tizé, modern contemplatives and guides to the life of the spirit. Stand here beside us. Innocents of Auschwitz and Dachau, Rwanda and Armenia, objects of genocide. Stand here beside us. Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, mystic and scientist, Nicholas Copernicus, and Johannes Kepler, explorers of the universe. Stand here beside us. John Muir, naturalist, and Seattle, chief of the Suquamish, witnesses to the sacredness of creation. Stand here beside us. William Mayo, Florence Nightingale, Albert Schweitzer, and all who brought God's healing touch to the sick. Stand here beside us. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad. For your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. If 
any of the young people want to come down and sit close, you're welcome to. No. I may have you help me preach. Anybody? You can sit right there. Anybody else? Okay, great. Yay. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, so I'm wondering this morning who you think are heroes. Who is a hero for you, Amira? You don't know. A hero? Okay. Who's a hero? A superhero? Okay, a superhero. Spider Man? Okay. Do you have any other heroes? Hulk? Okay. Do you have any people heroes? Like pe people, pe people, li live, bre breathing heroes. Well, I guess the Hulk breathes, at least occasionally. Who? The WWE heroes. Okay. That's wide world of. No, no, but the WWE, that's wide world. Oh, it's, it's fighting. Oh, fighting. Okay. Wrestling. Wrestling. Okay. Wrestling heroes. There's a time where they come in handy, you know? Who are some other heroes? Service, our service personnel. Okay. Doctor? Teachers? What? Parents? Nurses. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, um, I, since since I had a sports guy up here, I was expecting, you know, other sports that I had some knowledge of, <laughs> <laughs> which is pushing it. I realize, but okay. So, um, so if I had been asking this a few years ago, Michael, someone would have mentioned Michael Jordan, wouldn't they? Um, who? LeBron. <laughs> no? Who? Who? Who is? Who? I, no, I can't be here. What? Oh, LeBron of LeBron. I mean, really? Okay, so LeBron James. Someone might have said LeBron James. Okay. Would you have said LeBron James? Nope, I didn't think so. <laughs> Of course. Okay, so here's the deal. There are some people we say are heroes um, because history says they're heroes. You know, when you read it, you can read about them. I'm going to stand over here so I can see. We, we read about them in history because, because they won at something. They won at something. Or maybe they... Um, beat someone up, they won. History is written by the winners, right? That's what we always say. Well, guess what? The church tells us that we are not to write history the way the world writes history. We are to write history as Christians from the bottom up, from the bottom of the heap. Not the people who ended up on the top of the heap, not the LeBron James, not the Michael Jordans, not the uh, rock, and, okay, rock and roll people. Okay, I can relate to rock and roll people. Ro uh, uh, well, singers, people like that. It's not who we say, the church says, write it from the bottom up. And we've heard lots of names this morning of people who wrote history from the bottom of the heap up. People who suffered, people who alleviated suffering, people who shared the spark of Christ as only they could. Only 
Bach could have shared the spark of Christ the way he did. Only you, Mrs. Shentrup, can share the light of Christ the way that you do. You too. All of us. There are gifts and talents that we are given, and only we can share that light of Christ the way we do it. No one else can do that. So just think, some of the names that we might have heard this morning, some of the saints, Peter, we didn't hear Peter's name, but we could have, Mary, some of these people, we can only know Christ, the fullness of Christ, by knowing the people who lived with him when he was on the earth. We can only know Christ by the way Kamari lived, okay? the way Amira lived, the way Ian, Aiden lived, and Aiden's sister. <laughs> Because Christ lived his earthly life with the apostles and Mary and some children whom he invited to come and be with him, and Zacchaeus, who he called to come down out of the tree, and the Samaritan woman who then ran and told her village everything that he had said to her. We know Christ through the way that he lived with them, and that was passed on to the church. Some of those people in that story get mentioned when we pray the litany of the saints, and some are nameless. And then we encounter those people in scripture, and we become like them. We become a part of the constellation of Christians, encircling Jesus, because someone else has passed it on to us, and then we pass it on to them. We become like one of those stars. Who are these? In the first reading from the Revelation, we have heard prior to this morning all of the 144,000 who will be saved. That's from the 12 tribes, and then in come all these other people in white robes and singing and praising God. And the elder, who should know better, the elder asks, who are these? These aren't people from the 12 tribes. These aren't just the Jewish folk. Who is all of this? And John the Revelator says, well, you, you know, and the guy kind of wakes up, and he is seeing people from every language, tribe, people, and nation. Ah, the Gentiles. That means everyone. Everyone. Who are these like stars appearing? Oh, could it be that we all are called to be these stars, including Kamari? and Amira, and Layla, and Aiden. Yes? Someone wrote, I wish I could claim it as my own, that saints are those who have been struck by the lightning of God and then inflame everyone else around them. Oh my. What if we told parents when they brought their little itty bitty babies to be baptized? Oh, what we do at the font is we make saints at the font. And oh, we will pray that the lightning of God will come down and strike and inflame your child there at the font. And he or she will then take that flame to others. Who are these? These are the ones who are willing to write history from the bottom up, from the bottom of the heap. People like, on the front of your bulletin, this little child right here, this little one. Oh. Iqbal was his name. Iqbal from Pakistan. 
At the age of five, his parents sold him out, and he had to work as a slave in a rug factory. And somehow he got away from the rug factory, and he started teaching others that they should let the children go, that the children should get an education. They should learn how to read. They shouldn't have to slave away from the age of five making rugs. He was 11. He went to the UN Human Rights Commission and told them his story, his flaming life story. And not long after, as he left his church in Pakistan, after the Easter vigil, when we light the fire and we make saints at the font, he was assassinated at age 11. Who are these like stars appearing? Who are these who are willing to write the life of Christ from the bottom up, to take that light, to inflame others, to know that if they are in mourning, if they are peacemakers, if they are poor in spirit, they are there with the saints. We just mentioned um, the, the saints, the big saints, what we call the Red Letter Day saints, the saints that we mention in the Episcopal Church or in other Anglican churches. But it used to be that saints were the people who were local because we, they could see, the community could see that they were living these inflamed lives. And when the litany of the saints was sung at the Easter Vigil, people would call out names of those who were their heroes. Now we, we have a way of kind of writing them down and, and making them official. But there was a time when they were people of the heart who inflamed others. I bet you may know someone who, if we did that here now, you would call out that name. I would call out Florence Gray, Jim Gray. Who would you call out? When we sing the, the, the litany of the saints, usually we sing this long, a long list of saints and we sing, you know, the cantor will sing the long list of saints and we call back, pray for us, pray for us, Francis, Hildegard, Hilda, pray for us, pray for us. And here we have taken the example of those Christians in Central and South America who during the time of liberation theology would recall those who had been disappeared. It was not as though they were gone but they were forever present. And so today we have been saying, stand with us. If we're not careful, the saints will be only like the stars up there. And today we are calling, stand with us. Help us do the work that Christ has given us to do. Help us to do that for which we were baptized. Help us to be those inflamed Christians. Stand here with us. If you close your eyes, if you, if you pray ardently, perhaps you will feel one of those saints taking up a little space in the pew that is empty next to you. Who are these? Pray God that we are these.
days like stars appearing, John the 23rd, Pope and friend of the poor, who longed for the unity of all people. Stand here beside us. Janani Luum of Uganda, Oscar Romero of El Salvador, Jonathan Myrick Daniels, seminarian, reminders that there are martyrs with us still. Stand here beside us. Martyr for America, Martin Luther King, organizer for peace and justice, and apostle of nonviolence, Gandhi the Mahatma, reproach to the churches. Stand here beside us. Mother Teresa of Calcutta, fountain of compassion for the poorest of the poor. Stand here beside us. Mary Magdalene, first witness of the risen Christ. Stand here beside us. Unwed mother, blessed Mary, fair wellspring of our liberation. Stand here beside us. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses. Grant that we, encouraged by the good example of these your servants, may persevere in running the race that is set before us, until at last, with all your saints, attain to your eternal joy, through Jesus Christ, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray for the universal church and for the strength and courage of its members to carry out its mission, no matter how discouraging the news of the day may be. Lord, please hear our prayer. We pray for the Episcopal Church here in the Diocese of Southeast Florida, especially for Bishop Frade, Canon Mark, Mother Cynthia, and Deacon Lorna. Continue to make your vision their vision, and your work their purpose. Lord, please hear our prayer. We pray for your peace and for the welfare of our country and all other countries throughout the world, especially those in West Africa dealing with Ebola, for countries like Iraq and Syria in the Middle East that are threatened by ISIS, for countries and territories like Japan, Haiti, and Bermuda that are still recuperating from natural disasters, for freedom across the world, especially in China. Lord, please hear our prayer. We pray for our local communities of Coral Springs, Tamarack, Margate, Coconut Creek, and Parkland. We pray especially for peace and safety in our schools, for students applying for college admittance and scholarships, for an end to bullying and its harmful results, for school-aged children who have no homes. Lord, please hear our prayer. We pray for our environment, especially for endangered animals and for the knowledge of the destruction invasive species that are not native to South Florida often cause. Lord, please hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and suffering, for St. Lawrence Chapel, and for all outreach, outreach ministries of our church. Lord, please hear our prayer. We pray in thanksgiving for all the blessings in our lives, especially for our parents, our youth role models, mentors, and leaders. For our youth who have graduated and are now in college, for the armed forces, for Shannon, for all of our local sports teams, for all college-bound youth. Lord, please hear our prayer. Finally, we pray, God, for those who are grieving, for our church members who have recently passed away, for those who have lost a beloved pet. May the souls of all the faithfully departed with all your saints rest in peace. Lord, please hear our prayer. At this time, we give the opportunity for the congregation to lift up anyone in prayer that they would like to, offering prayers of thanksgiving. Ask your prayer for the repose of the soul of Irene Keezer. 
Mr. Joan Harner. Ask your prayers for those candidates for Bishop Coadjutor of the Diocese of Southeast Florida and for their parishes that they currently lead. Ask your prayer for the homeless in downtown Fort Lauderdale. Ask your prayers for those individuals who are feeding them at risk of arrest. Pray for the end of the criminalization of homelessness. O Lord, I God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. Welcome to St. Mary Magdalene Episcopal Church. If you are a guest or a visitor this morning, or maybe confused about what's going on a little bit, <laughs> we would love to welcome you, and we'd love to welcome you in person. Do we have any guests or visitors who would not mind identifying themselves, giving us your name, where you're from? I know we have visiting clergy here. Yeah, yes. Really, you've just moved back from Fort Myers. Michelle, welcome to St. Mary Magdalene. Good to have you with us. <laughs> Father, introduce yourself for us again. Welcome. It's good having you. We're going to thank you for the beautiful weather, the nice cool weather that you brought down, so you can claim that one. Anyone else? I would like to give a shout out to Mother Cynthia for pulling. That was, that was good. You know, way out of her comfort zone. Very good. Very good. Um, there, I've got just a few announcements. Um, please take a look at your bulletin so that... Um, I don't have to go over all of them, but one of the things I did want to bring to your attention is that there will be a service this Wednesday at 7 o'clock celebrating All Souls Day, where we will celebrate and remember the individuals who have died this past year, most especially from this parish, 
Um, certainly, we want to honor um, anyone who is named at that service. So come to that service. We will um, remember those who have died this past year and any other names that um, are offered forth um, during the service. That is this Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Um, also, um, we will be having the Friends First Friends of Music concert will take place um, this Saturday, November 8th at 7.30 here in the, in the church. The information is in your bulletin. There is someone that will be in the back Donna. with oh, Donna. Sam. And I've, Donna, stand just so they can see you. Um, Donna Drysdale has tickets for that. If you can't find them, they're right above where my little box is where I keep my books. So if you are looking for them, there's an envelope. There. Great. Donna, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We've got the stamp of approval, so we're hoping that we'll hear more of that. That's good. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, also, um, there is, there, we're about two-thirds of the way there in filling out our obligation to try to um, get the pews recovered. One of the pews has been returned that is um, sitting in the back in the narthex. Um, there are pledging opportunities for um, the um, pew restoration at several levels. Um, you notice that we have removed a couple of the pews in the very back, um, so that the, and they are out being refurbished right now. Um, it, it's kind of interesting. We thought maybe if we took the pews out from the back, it would force people to keep moving forward and sit in the front <laughs> row. <laughs> but we'll get them replaced. We'll, we will get them replaced, absolutely. So be careful, because I know there are some bolts that are sticking up out of the floor back there in that, in that area. We want to thank those individuals who have already pledged funds um, the, for uh, being able to um, get the pews restored. Like I said, we're about two-thirds of the way there. The goal is to get them completely redone by Christmas, so that when we come in here on Christmas time, they'll all be done and ready. Um, is there anyone who is celebrating a birthday anniversary or is traveling this week? We invite you to come forward for a blessing. Birthdays, wedding anniversaries, and travels. <coughs> birthdays? No birthdays? Oh, we do. All right. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. And raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may the peace which passes all understanding abide from all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. Anniversaries. All right. What anniversary are you celebrating? 53 years. And what about you? 37 years. Fantastic. If you will join right hands. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness that their homes may continue to be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Absolutely. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation, and whose presence we find wherever we go. Preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Travel in peace. Return to us safe. One last quick item. Um, the pledge cards for the stewardship drive for the year 2015 will be going out this week in the mail. 
There are two numbers that are on the pledge cards. One is the number that you had pledged last year, and the second number is the number that we need from individual pledgers in order to reach and fully fund the budget that the parish has set for itself, in order to fully fund all of the ministries that we are involved in. So if you would prayerfully take a look at that, and if we can fill out and be able to um, spread that out a little bit and um, increase our pledges um, just a little bit, um, we will avoid having a bridging the gap campaign and we can just continue and go ahead and move forward. So I ask that you prayerfully consider the um, numbers that are on your pledge cards and, and, and help us so that we can continue to fully fund the ministries of St. Mary Magdalene. Walk in love. Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
this time, I'd like to invite any of our youth who would like to stand up beside the, behind the altar may do so. So just come forward if you would like and stand up here. Makes me nervous too, trust me. <laughs> Every time. Come on over here, come over here. Come on around. Even the ushers in the back, if you want to come forward, you can. Please, come forward. This is a great time. How would you like to stand right up here? Can you see better? Okay. Surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses here. Very good. Excellent. Move right in so you can see. All right, here we go. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For in the multitude of your saints you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses, that we might rejoice in their fellowship and run with endurance the race that is set before us. Together with them receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. This is where we all want to hold our hands out. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity constancy and peace. And 
at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith. And with thanksgiving.
thanksgiving, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Would our lay Christic visitor please come forward. As she goes to visit those who are shut in, let us send her out together. In the name, in the name of, of this, this congregation, congregation, we send you forth bearing these holy gifts, that, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body, because we all share one bread, one cup. Amen. Father, could I ask you to come and give us the final blessing? Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.